Good afternoon, everyone, dear chair, dear audience. Let me present you my PhD work, which is Management Strategies for Patients with Valvular Heart Disease. I'm Odo Fikfus, and I'm a PhD student and a medical doctor at the Central Hospital of Northern Pest. And my, mission, uh, my vision is uh, that every patient with valvular heart disease should have an individualized treatment strategy. And my mission is to clarify the best treatment plan for each subgroup of these patients. I have two ongoing projects. My first project is assessing the effectiveness of transcatheter mitral valve repair on left ventricular reverse remodeling in heart failure. It's a systematic review and meta-analysis. Heart failure affects more than 64 million people worldwide, and mitral regurgitation is the most common valvular heart disease in heart failure patients, affecting almost 65% of patients with chronic heart failure and 50 of those with acute heart failure. Transcatheter mitral valve repair, or TMVR, is a possible therapeutic option for patients with severe mitral regurgitation with high risk for surgical valve repair. So our aim is to evaluate to what degree the TMVR procedure slows heart failure progression by measuring its effectiveness on reversing left ventricular remodeling. Our first clinical question is, how transcatheter mitral valve repair influence heart failure progression? Our population is heart failure patients with mitral regurgitation. Our intervention group is follow-up, TMVR plus guideline-derived medical therapy. Our comparison group is baseline, TMVR plus guideline-derived medical therapy. And our uh, primary outcomes are changing echocardiographic parameters. And our secondary outcomes are anti-pro-BMP, left atrial volume, and mitral regurgitation. We hypothesize that transcatheter mitral valve repair causes left ventricular remodeling, and as a clinical implication, we could, uh, clinician can uh, use our study uh, to to uh, to help uh, heart failure progression. Our second clinical question is: uh, Is transcatheter mitral valve repair more effective than pharmacological therapy in slowing heart failure progression? Our patient population is heart failure patients with mitral regurgitation, and we would like, com uh, we would like to compare TMVR to guideline-derived medical therapy alone. Our primary outcomes are echocardiographic parameters, and our secondary outcomes are periprocedural complications, anti-pro-BMP, uh, left atrial volume, and mitral regurgitation. We hypothesize that transcatheter mitral valve repair has a superiority in reverse remodeling effectiveness uh, compared to guideline-derived medical therapy alone. Uh, and using our study, uh, clinicians could optimize decision-making between uh, guideline-derived medical therapy and TMVR. We conducted our systematic search in three online databases. Down here, uh, you can see our search key. Uh, the first domain contains mitral regurgitation, and the second domain contains the TMVR technique. We started with more than 9,000 articles, and after the full text selection, we are, uh, we are at uh, approximately 37 articles. Uh, our first investigated parameter is left ventricular and diastolic diameter, which correlates well with left ventricular reverse remodeling, and we measure it in millimeters. Its normal value is below 52 in women and 58 in men. On our first plot, uh, uh, you can see uh, that we compared left ventricular and diastolic diameter before and after the TMVR procedure. And uh, our, uh, this analysis consists mainly of observational studies and uh, uh, consists uh, more than uh, 1,700 patients. We made three subgroups based on the follow-up period, one and, uh, at uh, one month, one at six months, and one at 12 months or one year. Uh, our uh, first difference uh, between before and after TMVR is minus 1.38. At six months, one uh, minus 2.13, and at 12 months, minus 2.60. Uh, we can see 
that by time the effectiveness of the TMVR technique is increasing. The between study heterogeneity is 0% in, uh, in the first two subgroups and 33% uh, in the third subgroup. Based on this result, we could say that the TMVR technique is a possible therapy for slowing heart failure progression by inducing reverse remodeling, but the correct patient selection is crucial. On our second plot, we wanted to compare medical therapy alone to TMVR. This analysis consists of four studies, uh, two RCTs and two non-randomized uh, control trials. Uh, we have more than 800 patients and the difference between the TMVR and medical therapy is minus 1.01, .01, which is statistically not significant. The between study heterogeneity is 0%. Based on this, we can uh, we can't say based on this parameter we can say that TM, the TMVR technique is a better therapy for this patient than medical therapy. The strengths of uh, our study is high patient number, many different follow-up periods, and unique study design. And the limitish, limitations uh, are that we all had only two RCTs and uh, f only a few studies with long-term follow-up, uh, which means more than 12 months. We are at uh, the risk of bias assessment stage right now. Our second project is investigating the predictive value of, ris of risk factors for subclinical leaflet thrombosis after a transcatheter aortic valve implantation. It's a systematic review and meta-analysis. Diseases of the aortic valve account for more than 60% of valvular heart disease deaths. Transcatheter aortic valve uh, implantation, or TEVI, is a revolutionary treatment for severe aortic stenosis, extending from high risk to lower risk patients. Subclinical leaflet thrombosis is an insidious condition, uh, which uh, can be found in 25% of patients within the first year following TEVI, and it can evaluate into symptomatic thrombosis or premature bioprosthesis degeneration, causing fatal neurological complications. So our aim is to assess the best prediction factors and biomarkers which could anticipate uh, subclinical leaflet thrombosis. And our clinical question is, what are the most effective predictors and biomarkers to enable early diagnosis and prevention of subclinical valve leaflet thrombosis after TAVI? Our patient population is patients undergoing TAVI. Our prediction factors are gender, comorbidities, procedure-related predictors, blood-based biomarkers, and imag imaging findings. And our outcome parameters are incidence of valve leaflet thrombosis. So we hypothesize by identifying and the, uh, and the utilization of effective predictors and biomarkers can lead to early diagnosis and prevention of subclinical valve leaflet thrombosis. We can use this data to enhance the customization of post-procedure antiplatelet and anti-coagulation uh, therapy for improved treatment outcomes. We are at the feasibility check phase with this project. And for summary, you could see uh, my two projects. The first one I, uh, I plan to submit in May, and the second one in September. Thank you for your attention. Reser research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think, everybody, uh, and to think what nobody else has thought. Albert and Georgi, thank you very much. Adolf, thank you very much for the excellent uh, presentation. Uh, I really liked your sentence that uh, patient selection is crucial uh, yes. before these interventions. You were speaking about uh, some different outcomes uh, related to your first project. And I would like to ask that what do you think, which is more reliable in outcome, the biomarker measurement or the echocardiography evolution? And my second question is, sorry, that the patient is not interested in his uh, left, ventri and, uh, left ventricle and diastolic diameter, but rather in his exercise tolerance. Yes, but, but uh, 
from a pathophysiological point of view, we think that uh, reverse remodeling is very important because uh, it's the start to the to the patient to feel better because if uh, his or her chambers are are in a good shape, the the symptoms will uh, will be better. Okay, I'm sorry, I asked two questions at the same time. And what do you think about the uh, reliability of the echocardiography, or would you rather choose biomarkers? I think in this case, echocardiography is more, uh, it's, it's more uh, objective than biomarkers, because... And what about inter-rater reliability? I, I am asking the same question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you for your presentation. My question is, uh, what are the echocardiographic uh, criteria to do a TMVR procedure? Yes, thank you for the question. So based on the co-opt inclusion criteria, there is uh, uh, different, uh, different uh, criteria. Uh, the first one is that the left ventricular and diastolic diameter uh, must be below uh, 70 millimeters. The ejection fraction must be um, more than, uh, than uh, 20%. Uh, the pulmonary um, artery pressure uh, less than uh, 70, uh, uh, 70 mercury, yeah? <laughs> Uh, mercury millimeter and uh, the regurgitant orifice area must be uh, higher than four uh, cent uh, centimeter squares. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for your presentation. What is the guideline um, for anticoagulant therapy after TAVI? Uh, the guideline is uh, that we should give uh, patients oral anticoagulation therapy uh, uh, who, who otherwise need oral anticoagulation therapy. And if the patients don't need oral anticoagulation therapy, uh, besides TOVI, uh, we give single antiplatelet therapy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, I've been thinking on that, uh, your, your first results, the left ventricular and diastolic yes. volume, or two, millimeter, two point something millimeters yes. difference, okay? It can be um, significant from the pathophysiological point of view. But this is, to me, such a small difference that if you do the measurement twice on the same patient at the same time, I mean, I can expect this kind of uh, bias in my measurement. So what is your view on that? Yes, you're right. Or uh, you are so good that it's, it's impossible. May, <laughs> maybe some people are so good, but... <laughs> I don't think that's me, but um, uh, as I read in uh, in different literature, they uh, they explain uh, reverse remodeling as a 10% decrease in uh, in diameter. So yeah, maybe two two millimeters are are not uh, significant, but uh, we would like to wait for the other results to to interpret it together.